you would have fed my soul. And say amen. 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 Uh, my, my folks are, uh, we have folks come over to our house, uh, they feed them. And they feed them good. In fact, they're not happy unless they are well fed. You have invited me to this, your home away from home. And I am fed well, so I am I'm excited about uh, this opportunity. And I thank you for your hospitality. Uh, I'm going to ask this in advance before I move um, I, your choir. I want to ask if there is some time that we might arrange that you all come to our church. Okay. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, we will. And, uh, and bless us uh, there. It would be it would be our privilege. We'll talk about that. Today. Uh, but I thank you. I thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, let us begin with the word of prayer. Master, we come into your very presence right now. And Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful for your goodness. Grateful for your grace and your mercy. Your compassion. Your loving kindness. Thank you for being a God to us, allowing us to be your children. Thank you for giving us this moment where we make entrance into your throne room, the place where you sit up high and, Master, look down low, look beyond our faults and see to our every need. Lord, we thank you for being that kind of God. And, Lord, we ask right now that you would bless right now, Father, that you would bless this assembly that you have gathered together, that this moment was preordained before the beginning of time, that we would all be in this room at this time hearing a word from you. Yes, Thank you, Lord, that it has come to fruition. Lord, we ask you to bless each heart in this place. Lord, use me right now as a vessel that you might be able to speak to the hearts of your people and that they may be able to leave this place changed not able to be the same way again. It's in the precious name of Jesus, the masterful name of Jesus, we ask these and all the blessings. Amen. Amen. I have a question to ask you. One of the most, one of the most difficult things about being a Christian is being around Christians. <laughs> Amen. Church folks, we are an odd sort sometimes. Just <laughs> we can be, we can be, I had somebody say this, and, and, and this is a typical response to being a, a, a Christian. Uh, when someone who is not will talk about us. One of the very first words that come to their mind about us, to talk about us, is to call us hypocrites. Mm -hmm. To call us hypocrites. However, this is what I say to them in response. The church is a hospital. Mm -hmm. This is where sick people come to get better. We we're born with a sinful nature, and thus we are sin sick. We have a nature that is against God. In fact, the sickness that we have is fatal. It will lead to death. The Bible says very clearly that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. We are sin sick. We come to this place as a hospital. Uh, and so when the world talks about us and calls us names, then here's what I say. You can call me a hypocrite because, yes, I mess up. I can't claim perfection. I, I fall short. But if you're going to do that to me as a Christian, you got to do the same thing to the doctor. Don't go to the doctor's office because if you sit in the doctor's office, there's a whole bunch of people who are sick in the doctor's office. And don't go to the dentist because people in the dentist got bad teeth. Or don't go to the podiatrist, the foot doctor, because 
People who go to the foot doctor have bad feet. You got to apply that to everybody. We come here to get better. So the text that has been read, thank you, young lady, thank you for, uh, for reading. Uh, I just like to use as a title, as you're aware of this title, Oh Say Can You See. Uh, when I was growing up, we had vacation Bible school. And there was a <coughs> little rhyme that they taught us. And it said this, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. As the Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. Somebody might ask at some point in time, who was Zacchaeus? my response to them would be Zacchaeus was a wee little man. Verse 3 of the scripture tells us that he was little of stature. The word that's oftentimes used is that he was short. But being short simply made him a little man. We know that he was a wee little man. It wasn't because of his diminutive stature that made him a wee little man. The thing that made him a wee little man was his diminutive character. He was a wee little man because he was a cheat. He was a swindler. He was a thief. And he was a liar. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was a tax collector, and he wasn't just any tax collector. Uh, the Bible says that he was the chief of the tax collectors. Uh, and uh, uh, he, the Jews in that day hated the Romans, and they hated tax collectors. Uh, they, they hated tax collectors because tax collectors were Jews that worked for Rome, who was their enemy. And, and, and tax collectors, the way that tax collectors made money was by overcharging them on their taxes. They would charge them more than they had. And because of that, they would become very wealthy. And Zacchaeus was a very wealthy man. Uh, he was very wealthy. He was good at what he did. He was called the chief or the godfather <laughs> of the tax collector. So he wasn't a wee little man just because he was short. He was a wee little man because he was a dirty, rotten scoundrel who happened to be short. But the Bible says that one day, for some reason, some circumstance came into his life and, and Zacchaeus climbed up into a sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. He had a problem. He had a problem. He had to climb up because he was too short. He couldn't see Jesus. Let me, let me say it this way. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but he couldn't see him because the crowd was in his way. Let me say it another way. He wanted to see Jesus, but there were some folks who were already following Jesus, and they got in his way. I saw a couple more lights go. I'm going to say this another way. He came to have an encounter with Jesus, but there were some churchy folk who were all in his way, and he could not see Jesus because of them. Somebody came to church today. You came because you wanted to see Jesus, but 
Maybe there's somebody who has gotten in your way and it makes it so you can't see him in the place. Maybe you can't have an encounter with Jesus because there's some churchy folk who are in the way. Some of the most difficult people to deal with in the church are churchy folk. Shouldn't it be that someone looking to see Jesus should be able to come into the church and see some Jesus? <laughs> but instead of helping Zacchaeus see Jesus, there were some folk that were in his way blocking his view. I say this, that some of the same followers back then that were getting in Zacchaeus' way are still getting into folks' way even today. There's a bunch of folks that do it, a bunch of categories of folks. I'm just going to cover three. And, and, but, but watch this. One of them is, uh, I call it the holier-than-thou follower. The holier-than-thou follower. If, if there was a holier-than-thou follower in front of Zacchaeus, then he wouldn't be able to see Jesus. This person is a legend in his own mind. <laughs> in his own mind, he, he has a relationship with the Lord that's deep. It's deep. His relationship with the Lord is deep. Uh, 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 it, it's so deep that he doesn't have anything to smile about. You can never tell that there's anything going on good in his life. And he doesn't seem to have a relationship or much value to do with anybody else. In fact, you don't even feel like you can approach this person. You don't even want to approach this person, but if you ever decide that you will, make sure that what you say is deep. Otherwise, he'll look at you like you're short. <laughs> Don't misunderstand. This person, this holier than thou person, this person uh, doesn't mind if you worship the Lord. They just don't want you to worship where they worship. Mm -hmm. Somebody just out of jail. Mm -hmm. They don't, they come out of jail and they want to see Jesus. This person doesn't mind them worshiping Jesus. Just don't worship where I worship. They don't mind if a person uh, has an addiction to drugs and has had an addiction to alcohol and, and now they want to see Jesus. He doesn't mind them worshiping Jesus. He just doesn't want him worshiping where he worships. If there were a holier than thou follower in front of Zacchaeus, then Zacchaeus wouldn't be able to see Jesus. There's another kind. I, I call this, this is for the math majors, I call this a place-holding follower. If there was a place-holding follower in front of Zacchaeus, then Zacchaeus wouldn't be able to see Jesus. Let me explain what I mean by this one. I need you to picture this in your mind. There's two numbers I want you to picture uh, in your mind. Uh, the first number is one. And the second number is 10. Now, what is the difference between the two of them visually? Zero. Okay, okay the, the zero. Okay, uh, in mathematics, zero is a placeholder. The role of the zero is simply to do this. It's to take up a space and make the number look bigger. Uh, if I have one zero, I have ten. If I have two zeros, I have one hundred. If I have three zeros, I have a thousand. The problem is that zero by itself represents emptiness. Zero by itself represents nothingness. It represents 
absence. Mathematically, a zero doesn't add anything, nor does it take anything away. It just holds a place. And that's why there's a problem if you measure a church growth by the number of members. If you want to do that, then all you need to do is add a bunch of zeros. I, I, I'm not calling anybody names. I'm just saying that there are some people in the church who just occupy space and make the numbers look bigger. They're just placeholders. And, and, and church, uh, uh, church growth really has to be measured based on quality, not quantity. Uh, the quality of a membership is based on how good you are in helping me to see Jesus. All right. Because if you can't help me see him, then you're just holding a place and you're just making the number of people look bigger. If there was a place holding follower in front of Zacchaeus, he would not be able to see Jesus. The final one I'm going to talk to you about is this. Um, if there was a hell-raising follower, a hell-raising follower in front of Zacchaeus, can you say hell-raising this as well? You, uh, uh, you wouldn't be able to see Jesus. This is a frustrated person. They are frustrated for nobody ever sees things the way that he does. And because of that, this is an angry and a bitter person. And if you happen to see him in a crowd, you should know that he didn't really come to see Jesus. The only reason he came is because he saw a crowd and an opportunity. An opportunity to raise hell. Even if that means tearing down the church. And, and I understand this, that the hell raising ministry does most of its work after church on the phone. Okay? Uh -uh. Every time they get on the phone, they raise a little bit of hell and weaken the church a little bit more. It's not because they want to help the church through a problem, but it's because there are oftentimes mean-spirited attitudes that thrive on chaos. But this person doesn't really care because they're more interested in making a point. They always got a point to be made. They got to make a point about how the church is spending its money. They got to have to make a point about uh, what the choir is singing. They got a problem with what the preacher is doing or what the preacher is not doing. The problem is that while they're trying to make a point, there's somebody who cannot see Jesus. Because all they can see is his anger and his bitterness. If there was a hell raising follower in front of Zacchaeus, then Zacchaeus wouldn't be able to see Jesus. And that's why you and I have to do something. We have to check ourselves. If you don't get anything else out of what we're saying, is we got to check ourselves. We have to ask our question, am I? Standing in somebody's way? And am I blocking someone's ability to see Jesus? Because if you are, then what you have to do is lift them up above you so they can see over you. The, 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 the little saying said, as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. Uh, Zacchaeus met Jesus that day. Uh, and you know what's good about meeting Jesus? When you fall in love with him, and you will. When you fall in love with him, you don't have to leave him on the showroom floor until you can arrange finances. <laughs> When you fall in love with him, you, you don't have to leave him in the display case just to be seen and admired. No, when you fall in love with Jesus, you can take him home. And if you take him home, he'll fight your battles. If you take him home, he'll be your bridge over troubled water. If you take him home, he'll be your
your sunshine on a cloudy day. Yes. If you take him home, he'll be your doctor in the sick room. Yes. He'll be your lawyer in the courtroom. He'll be your friend until the very end. And that is not a friend like the Lord yes. Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. I, I, I'm glad that Zacchaeus met him on a tree. Uh, but when I first met him, uh, I met him at a tree. Uh, he was at a tree uh, with a crown of thorns on his head. He had nails in his hands with nails in his feet. Oh, they hung him high and they pissed him in his side and his blood would flow. I'm talking about the blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on that hill called Calvary. God bless you, church.